This segment is just about replacing wheel bearings. So I've taken the wheel bearings off my MG. I've taken the discs off so that you are working with a smaller component. It's easier to work around the hub rather than having a big disc as well. So I took the two outer races out through a drift. This is punch, punch it through from this side and then I can go on this side and punch it through from that side. So I'll take the two old outer races out and when the outer race comes on from the inner bearing, it brings the oil seal with it, the grease seal with it. And then this falls out. So this on an MG will go in until you put the grease seal in. Uh, and then it won't go in anymore with the inner race in. So that's that. So once you clean everything up, get rid of all the old grease, any old bits and pieces and flakes or whatever. New bearings. Personally, I use Timken because they just seem to be the best. Get the two outer races off, then put the two inner races back into the plastic bags and put them and seal them away. And then you can push these two in. So with this, I have this kit. So this kit has one for this side and then it has one for the other side. I think that's the wrong one. That's the wrong one. So that's the next one up. So that's over here. So that one's there, so that one goes in there and that punches that in quite nicely. This is the oil seal, the grease seal for this side. So once I've done that, put on the press, then I get the, with a little handle, which has a little bolt in it. Hold it all square. Put that in there. Put that in the center of the press. And then I can just press it down here. And then just put the extra pressure on there and then push it home. And then you feel it go nice and solid. Done. Release it. And then take that out and then you put the other side put well you, you do the two larger outer races at the same time to save changing this over twice so anyway then you turn it over and then you punch the other one in which i've done and then what i do is i prefer to set the bearings up to dry so I'll, now i'll get the hub the spacer and a couple of shims and i'll stick it on the car and then when i've got the right uh, amount of end float about two or three thou then I'll grease it all up and I'll put the grease seal back on again and then assemble it and that way I know that the setting is right when you do it with grease I've always found it a bit inaccurate and it ends up with a bit too much end float because you can't like feel the bearing and feel the bearing clearance it's always better to do it dry I found personally and then uh, yeah it all gets set up so this little kit here, very handy. There's also a kit you can get with uh, a parallel for doing just regular roller bearings or whatever. So yeah, the, this is just the taper roller set. Cheaper chips off uh, your whatever <laughs> website you decide to use, Amazon, eBay, whatever, Etsy, whatever. All right, so I think that's about it. And I'll have to move into the uh, domain of kingpin bearings sleeves uh, but I've got a bit of machining to do on that one to get the right sleeves made up for the right sizes to push them in and out so I'll just focus on the wheel bearings for now get them done because I can progress that so I might even do that with the hub down here rather than on the car anyway we'll see how we go that's just uh, something else to do have a nice weekend crap to cream this is the rebuild of the front stub axle kingpin on an MGB. So I've done the kingpin, which you would have seen on another video. So that's done. So now I'm just gonna go through the installation and the setting up of the wheel bearings. So first and most importantly is you may need to put that spacer on. 
yes, I have forgotten that in the past. And that's when the hub then hits the caliper on the brakes. So I set these up clean and dry, no grease, no oil seal, and no disc, no back plate, nothing. So that I find this gives me the most accurate setup. So have everything clean, nice clean rag. Put the inner race on. I also have a towel underneath. So in the event that I possibly drop something, it's better falling in a towel, a clean towel, than it is to fall on the floor. Then the spacer. So you can do all this now because you haven't got anything else Now, as it is, I've set this up already, but I will, what I will show you is what it goes like when it's too tight. So you just put the outer race on, the outer inner race, you have the washer, and then you have the nut. Now, depending on how mechanical you are, when you tighten this nut by hand, you will feel in a certain amount of spring in it. And that sort of tells you, right, that it's going to be over. The clearance isn't going to be right. And then just give it a gentle nip and you'll feel the spring in this. And that'll tell you, right, this is not going to be right. So then the hub doesn't turn freely. So there's no point overloading it. Always have your hand underneath to catch any bits that fall off. Because you've done it this way, right, you can take everything off all the time. Now I know the shims now are the right ones, because I've set this up so that you don't have to watch me going through that process. Put the hub back on again, put the inner, inner outer race on, put the washer on, put the nut on. And when you tighten that up, immediately you feel it's gone solid. Right, so you've got a pretty good idea that it's either too loose, French fit, or it's right. So, that's what it should spin like, in my opinion. Right, so that's set up now. It's not got any axial float in it. It sounds a bit rattly because that's got no grease in it at all. So it has to have a little bit of end float in it, like a thou, thou and a half so that the grease can get between the rollers and the inner and outer races. But apart from that, for me, that's fine now. So now I can take this apart, I can grease it all up, put the grease seal in, put it all together, and I know it's right. I don't have to do any more. So one thing, you can buy shim packs. I'm not sure whether you can see them, but you, you can buy shim packs with all varying shim sizes varying all over the place from thick to thin. So I've got some in here. And when you're setting it up initially, right, you'll be able to feel it, whether it's thick or thin. So that one's quite thick. That one's very thick. <laughs> that one's not too bad. That's, it's sort of in the middle somewhere. See, this is very, very thin. Bit thick, thin, thin, thicker. So you can set it up that way. You can put, you put them in little piles. I've got a, my micrometer, you can just measure them and I'll give you the sizes. So that's 20 thou. Pick a thin one, pick a thin one, pick a thin one. Ah, there's a thin one. And that's three thou. Right, so you can vary it around, play around with your numbers until you get feel if you end up with axial float in this it's too loose bearings do need a certain amount of preload a little bit of preload everybody's their own personal touch but if you don't have preload then bearings can skid in the grease and then cause overheating and obviously if you have, don't have enough clearance then the bearings will overheat because they've got too much preload on them so just something you've got to be mindful of you've got to try and strike that balance in between the middle somewhere so I'm not advertising, but 
I always use the uh, synthetic grease, personally. That's my own personal choice. And there you go. So that's how to set up a bearing housing. So I now put the disc on and it all becomes heavier and more cumbersome. But I know that the clearance is right now with the bearings and I can set that up in the luxury of the lathe, uh, sorry, in the vise, like it has been done now. Also done a bit, bit of machining this morning, so for the cable, for the throttle on the carburetor. So it's got a little bit of play in it because it's a bit offset. So I'd rather the offset taken up by the cable than by the fitting because then otherwise the fitting will just wear. So yeah, machined all that up. Machined that up this morning. So that's ready to go. So I'll put, the, put, put that on. Replaced the twin SUs, which are a bit of a dog's breakfast as you would have seen from the previous video or one of the previous videos because I had to take that off take the twin SUs off to fix the oil leak on the on the valve chest on the engine so that's all been done now and uh, yeah we're progressing towards uh, pit time <laughs> 